All right. Hello, everyone. This is Cleo, your guide through the ex eclectic sphere, exploring the realm of perception. Why might you ask? Well, for the purpose of the eternal return, you know. Um, oh, yeah, this is Voltaris. Boy, it's going to take me a while to, to get used in the rhythm. And just to let you know, prior to this, I had six. Yes, six test runs to get my audio correct. That was just, yeah, too much fun. Anyways, back on track. Yes, I have written notes because I'm one of those people that if I don't have some semblance of structure, I'm going to be pinging like a little pinball machine and nobody's going to know which way I'm going and I will have no clue how to track back. Not a sit stitch because that's how my brain is. It is a pinball machine in there. Anyways, so back on track here. Um, the eternal return. So the reason that I chose eternal return to go along with Voltaris is because basically it's remembering or recalling memories, not just here in the mundane, but out there. You know, a lot of people I go, Whoo! you know, if some people still will with me, they always will have ever since I was a child. You know, my own grandson said so. He goes, oh, Bobby, you're weird. I go, yeah, well, honey, it takes one to know when, and now he understands that. Um, but basically, it's the remembering, it's the recalling, um, and it's all for the purpose of integration with oneself, you know, integrating our fragments to oneself so that when we become more whole as individuals, we're actually becoming whole as a collective. And a lot of us forget about that. The more that we're strengthened, you know, internally with ourselves, when, when we can be honest with ourselves more than anything else, being honest with ourselves, that's tough because it's very easy to deceive our own selves. But when we can be honest with ourselves so that we can integrate, we are automatically unconsciously modeling this for others to do the same because I know I get inspired, you know, by those I perceive and we're going to get to the word perception and perceive because I will be using that always for the most part. I really will because we all have a perception of nearly everything. So we'll discuss that. And just so you know, when it comes to perception, it's mostly, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be sharing from my perceptive, you know, point of view, because that's the one I've got. And I'm not going to assume or presume that I know what your perception is on something. And honestly, I wouldn't want to, because then I have blocked off my learning from you or anybody else I come into contact with. So with that, I, and this is kind of going back, I had this thought today, it kind of went ding, because that happens a lot. Oh, welcome to Shadow. Shadow, get comfy, please. Okay. Um, my kitty, Shadow. Anyways, um, it kind of took me back to when I was a junior in high school, 11th grade. I won't ever forget, I had um, Mrs. Davis in English and Lit class. Her name was Virginia Davis. I remember this because she used to get so upset with her own personal name initials. She goes, oh my gosh, my initials are BC. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm sure you can figure it out. <laughs> Anyways, she made every single one of us within the first week of our junior year to memorize and recite out loud to everyone, every single one of us how to do this, a poem by John Donne. And if you're not familiar with John Donne, he lived in the late 1500s, early 1600s, so you could say turn of the 17th century. And um, the specific poem is called No Man is an Island. And when I worked for the county, because my background is in psychology and I, I work directly with families in need. I was a facilitator for the wraparound process. And so I was in homes and I would facilitate all these uh, various disciplines to work with one another on behalf of a family per their needs. 
I can get into that later. It's a real long drawn out thing. Um, I'm sure as time goes on, I will be discussing more about my background. Um, it's a long one, <laughs> so just to say, but to get back on track, this is why I have notes, because I, I go out there. So, no man is an island. I did write this down because I do not have it memorized in my head any longer. I have particular lines, that's about it. So anyways, this is how it goes. No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less, as well as if a promontory were, as well as any manner of thy friends or of thine own were. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind, and therefore, Never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. I always loved it because what he's basically saying is it's a domino ripple effect. We are all a part of one. We are a collective. We may not like everybody, just like we may not always like and enjoy, you know, family members, friends, so on, coworkers, so on and so forth. But regardless, we're all human. You know, we, we all have experiences, we all have, um, I'll, I'll save that for another time. It's ready to go off on a completely different tangent, but basically we're human and we all have ups, we all have downs, we need to be kind to one another and we need to support one another, we need to have each other's backs because the moment we divide and get divisive and pick one another off, guess what? We're not there anymore. We are herd animals. People don't like to hear that, but we are. We are social creatures. We need one another. We are stronger in numbers. And the reason why is because we all have strengths. We all have weaknesses. Every single last one of us do. The best way to really, you know, get through anything is to honor one another's strengths and support those because myself honoring your strength is only going to protect me more and vice versa if we only focus on the the weaknesses that's all we're going to have so i just wanted to share that because it goes into perception as far as which way and why um and of course that's a part of what shaped me it's a part of my experience you know growing up you could say that at heart, I'm like a philosopher because um, I love to question. And we can blame my parents for that one. <laughs> my parents taught me that uh, question everything, question anything, always. Don't ever take anything for absolute, utter fact, face value, nothing. Not a book, not what someone says, anything. Take what they have, digest it, question it, explore it and then settle into your own gut and figure out, is that right? Because when you do that, you actually discover so much more and it has more meaning. It has more context to it. Um, and you're, you're being honest with yourself because you're taking responsibility for your own perception, your own interpretation. So I'll go ahead and roll into the perceptions okay so perception is to perceive as we all know and basically what it's doing is it's formulating a structured concept assigned to an observation because we all observe things so when we observe something we kind of do this internal process of what does that mean to me? How do I assign that based off of my backlog, my back, you know, log library of experiences that I have incurred, right? So it, it, it gives this structure of this concept, which of course, it does assign a value to it. Do you like it? Do you want to keep it around? Do you want to toss it out? Or does it now 
serve some value where it's going to benefit you, which comes down to needs, personal needs, not wants, needs. And I'll go into that in another, you know, video as well, because every single human drives off of needs. Unfortunately, within our society, how it has gone over decades, I'll say yeah, at least since I've been alive, um, and that's moving close to five decades, just so you know. <laughs> um, it's one of those things where it's like, well, what is the value? What does it serve me? Not just for my basic needs, but what it is I'm perceiving of serving around in society that I feel like maybe I'm supposed to have. So that's where a lot of the perception comes in. Not only that, behaviors, social norms, um, cultural differences. I mean, it, it, there's so much, we are highly complex. As humans, highly complex, individually and collectively. At the same time, just had a brain fart, gotta love it. You're getting unedited today because I am still learning all the technology and what is going, I will get so much better. There's, I, 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 I will recap on that um, towards the end for you. But basically we're, we are, we're complex. And within that, I would say good 90% of us aren't even aware that we are master manifestors. We have immense energy and power to us. And we don't even realize what we're creating half the time. This has been my direct experience working with people in need. Um, high risk population as people like to call them. Um, so it kind of comes back to perceptions, how they formulate is through the physical, the mental, the etheric, the emotional, the spiritual sensations that um, we have assigned meanings to. And it's that combination, that, that um, proverbial little, you know, um, what, what do you call it? Like smorgasbord, I guess you can say. I don't know. Where it's like all tossed in, you know? It's it's that combination that creates those perceptions quite often, sometimes quite ingrained. It really does depend on temperament and personality, how that, you know, um, develops and how flexible it may be or how rigid it can, you know, become. But a perception is all of that together piled on one another. So the more open you can be, the more you can actually perceive objectively. Because quite often what happens is um, perceptions, they can go down two routes. You can go down the um, subjective route, which is very personal. It's very just what I see, what I feel, what I've experienced. That is actually how it should be for everybody. It's like one lane highway type thing. And that becomes very rigid. It's, it's difficult to break out of at times that, you know, again, I've observed, again, this is one of those things where my perceptions doesn't mean I'm right or wrong. They're just my perceptions. That's all. But I've also grown very accustomed throughout my entire life where I don't assign a whole lot of attachment to them because they're always changing. They're always evolving because life is not stagnant it can become very stagnant when it's only subjective. Um, that's where very hardcore opinions and judgments, you know, um, develop. Um, but when it's objective, you really do become detached and people will call you the devil's advocate because you're going to flip flop and look at both sides. You're going to get both sides. And guess what? Sometimes you'll throw in a third, just, just for giggles, just because you know what? That's possible too. I can tell you what, I piss off a lot of people. I tick them off. But I'm like, but it's possible. The probabilities are there. So that's why Voltaris, the platform Voltaris, is really going to be addressing these perceptions on every topic. 
Um, and I would love to hear what type of topics you want to, I don't know, know more about, or just to hear something different about, or to expand on. I have more than plenty. Like right now, I could be sitting here rattling for hours, picking out a good, I don't know, 30 for you, you know, um, because that's how my brain is. And I think this platform may help me unload um, quite a bit of that <laughs> because it, I, I need to do some pruning up here. It's, uh, there, there's a lot, it gets a little jumbled. And sometimes I'm not even conscious of it. It just, all of a sudden, boom, I could be up in the middle of the night, I'm pulling out that pen and paper and I'm writing going, what the heck was that? I just, a lot is happening. You know, it has most of my life, but it absolutely has the last couple of years. It's just download, 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 download. And I'm just like, Whew. I have stacks of papers. <laughs> I have all kinds of things written. One of these days I'll get it to my book. But this will help. That I, I, I do believe that this is going to help relieve a lot of what's swirling on up there. And maybe, and I'm hoping that it might ring true for, you know, others and how they might be feeling, or they might be thinking, oh my gosh, that's what I thought, but I wasn't sure if I should share it or not because of, I don't know, the environment. I know when I had, you know, um, where I worked in the county, my, my work environment, I didn't fit in. I just didn't fit in. Um, I tried but I'm not a water cooler gal. I'm, I'm not into small talk a whole lot. I like to go deep and ask a lot of questions. And I learned a lot of people don't like questions. They just don't like them. Unfortunately, that's how I operate. I am always asking questions and I'll ask a question why that question was asked. <laughs> of course, I won't ask until after I've answered something because I'm one of those. If I answer, you know, if I ask a question and then my response is a question, I get a little peeved because please out of courtesy just answer my question and then and then you can ask me a question you know in in return but yes i i do believe i'm a philosopher at heart because i love that endless rabbit hole of inquiry you don't know where it's going to take you and you know what i don't think there's ever really genuinely truly an end result there may be for that moment but not in its entirety. That's gonna bring me to a little four-year-old. Four this is um, an adorable child who a mother was sharing with me. I, I, I know the mom, she's like best friends with my daughter. And she was sharing with me her son's, I guess, conversation with her regarding time, which this child is wise beyond his years. He's only, I think, around four years old, I want to say. Wise beyond his years. So basically, in his perception, he is trying to understand something, right? So he asked, what time is it? And th th this is going off of what I was told directly from the mom. He's asking, what time is it? She responds, it's 2.44. And then he looks down and he goes, well, what's that? <laughs> so, well, that's the time. And he's like, but what does that mean? <laughs> and she's like, I just want to strangle him. And I'm like, no, wait a minute. That's phenomenal. He is really, really wise. Because what is time? What is it really? What does it mean? What is time? mean. And I do recall a regression I had, you know, um, it was actually last year. Yeah, I had a regression last year. That was one of the questions that came up, what is time? And I do recall saying that yeah, there is no such thing. But then as I guess my higher self, as my higher self was trying to say, oh no, retract that. Time exists in particular realms, dimensions, planets for the sole purpose of a measurement, a scalable measurement of growth. It's kind of like an organizational tool. It's a tool. It's not, 
it's not really an existence. It is a concept that was creative um, to give structure. It's something concrete. Again, it's measurable, it's quantitative, it's scalable, but it's also controlling. It will control our, I guess you could say flow. Like if we're in a flow of something, it's like, oh, sorry, oh, time's up, that's over. And it's like, woo, it's like all of a sudden, you're just on a beautiful lullaby river raft and then somebody threw up a dam, you know, a dam. Whoop, sorry, end of the route. And you're just like, oh, 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 I gotta get out of the, I gotta get out of the raft now. That's like, oh, okay. And the next thing, I mean, it, it's just, it's, it's boggling, you know, it, it, it can throw you off and everything. So that's what I learned about that as far as time is that it doesn't really exist because there's so much overlapping. Um, there's so much flow. There's so much expansion and contraction and movement. It just is because nothing's really moving. There is no such thing as time. It, it, it's, it's kind of difficult to talk about right now. Maybe I'll come back with another topic on that. But I wanted to bring up the perception along with that, because this is a four-year-old questioning an adult. What does that mean? The time, what does time mean? And for me, I love it. <laughs> because it, it does make you question, what, what is the purpose? What is the value of time? There are probably gonna be moments where, oh, it's absolutely necessary and it's very helpful to sync up various rivers, right? Various flows that are happening. But it's also, you know, it's a structure but can also be very controlling, right? Um, but mostly it's an, it's an organization of moments of the past projecting as to how it should occur in the future. That's where a lot of the control comes from. Again, I just went off topic to an extent, but again, it's perception. And that's how I understand time in a very brief synopsis, right? Um, now, I know I didn't do a real heavy intro. Again, a lot more is gonna trickle along, but I don't wanna make it too long because people don't really know me and they probably don't wanna to listen to me yammer on. Um, I do want to let you know that I, I want to mix it up. I absolutely want to mix it up. Um, I have a vision of having conversations with people on here because I love being mentally challenged. So again, if you have topics or you have, you know, something along those lines, it would be great. I want to learn how to go live. I am learning the ropes on technology and I want to let you know. Oh man, I failed a lot. I have failed so many times trying to get this thing up and running. I even failed at getting my website up. Uh, it doesn't mean I'm gonna quit, but I, I'm gonna keep trying. Um, there's so much. I have, again, I need to release the deluge of what is in here. Um, my, my computer processing, it, it needs pruning. It needs pruning. And in order for me to do that, I need to dump things. So yes, I would love to have conversations, you know, on these, on these casts. I want to be, be able to do them in different environments, different locations. I also, I have a lot of plans to put together PowerPoints, audio PowerPoints, because I do event presentations and I love doing PowerPoints because I feel visuals are very important because I'm a visual learner. I'm a visual and a doer. I am not good at audio. So I don't wanna just give you audio where you're just listening to me because that can be, all, I, I don't, I don't wanna do it for, for myself. Um, I would be bored with myself and I don't, I don't wanna be bored with myself. <laughs> so, so at the end, and I kind of realized because I'm not gonna be able to help myself, I'm going to have like this little brain tickler bag that I'm going to have at the end of each um, video session because, again, I need to have a little bit of structure. And so I'm going to have maybe two topics per video 
And then I don't know what's going to come up in that day. It might be moments before it might be in the middle of it that all of a sudden I'm going to have a brain tickler. Right. So, and I'll pull it out of the back. That's my brain tickler bag. Right. So today the brain tickler is John Teeter from 2036. I don't know if anybody's heard about John Teeter. I had completely forgotten about him. Um, I first heard about John Teeter on Coast to Coast with George Norrie back in 2004. And it was interesting. I was like, wow, okay, cool, right? Well, make a long story short, they re-aired that 2004 episode last night. Um, no new commentary, it was just a re-airing of that original episode in 2004. Well, I guess John Teeter was around here between 1998 to 2000. And I guess he was talking to some people and doing some, I don't know, email, internet conversation or letters, something like that. I'm not exactly clear. Basically, he's a time traveler. He was assigned to go back into 1975 to get some kind of IBM 5100 computer that I guess his great paternal grand, great, great paternal grandfather helped build or just great paternal grandfather built because they had a particular Y2K glitch that was that either did happen in 2000 and ours didn't as you recall and um, I guess they were possibly expecting one or we're expecting one in 2034 that's what I understand so far so anyways yes time traveler and he went back, did that. He stopped by in, I guess, around 2000 for personal reasons. I guess he went rogue. I'm not really certain. Um, anyways, what I found interesting, and the reason why I'm bringing this up, is because they were talking at that time. This was his relaying, and I wrote it down because one thing you're going to learn about me, um, I'm not always the best with names, dates, facts, okay? I can get the gist, I can really pull it in, but I'm not gonna be able to throw it out there. That's not how my brain works. Um, I can give you the entire gist, the entire scenario, but not the details. So even with that, anything I say or do, I strongly suggest that if you want to look into something more and be like, hmm, I wonder if she's on it or not, I don't mind, it's cool, I don't mind. I love to learn new things. If you came back and told me something new, I'd be like, oh, wow, okay. New information, prune, clip, insert, you know, that just kind of how I do it. I like it. <laughs> so anyways, he basically went, um, he was stating that in 2004, there was going to be an onset of unrest in the United States. Um, he was saying that it's going to start building um, monthly, like Waco style. If people can remember Waco, Texas with the whole... <gasps> you know, that the government went in, wiped out a bunch of people in the white go compound. Um, again, see, I don't know the names and details. I just remember the cons of what happened. Um, so anyways, he was saying that it was going to be a monthly and it was going to intensify and keep growing. And it was going to continue through 2012. So you could say that was eight years, right? Which every person at one way on one level or another is going to have the experience of these disputes it is going to become blown out civil war between the the order the people who want the order and the people who want to retain their liberties at least what's left of their liberties they are going to be the opposing beliefs of this civil war here in the united states then Three years later, he was saying in 2015, World War III would break out. It was going to be brief. It was going to last terribly long, but then it would break out, and then it would chill again. Well, as he explained, and as I understand time travel, which actually, let me correct that. He wasn't time traveling. He was world line hopping. He came from a different dimension, and he explained that when he goes through various world timelines, um, timelines along with, this is where visuals help. So for example, parallel worlds, right? And he's going to jump from his parallel world to this one. 
but he's not going to go over identical, not same timeline. He's going to jump past over. So it's kind of like a crossover hop, right? And then he's going to take that and hop over. This is where he's really from, but he hopped over here. As he explained it, um, there's an infinite amount. And because there's 100% possibility in the mall. He said he only notices about 2.5% difference between them. Again, that's his perception, his observation, his experience. I don't know, I don't have a clue. I can't say that I've done what he's done, right? I don't even know if he's real. I'm just bringing this up because it's fascinating regarding the entire civil war in the US with the unright, he said so much more. Um, he even talked about mad cow disease back then when you know a lot of it was occurring. He was even talking about how viruses were gonna be used to cure cancer. And they've already revealed that quite some time ago. They've been using viruses to test and play with cancer. So, and I don't know about that. All I know, I'll stop on the cancer thing. I know different things about cancer, but I'll stop there. Anyways, I was looking at timelines and like he said, he goes, they shift, they change because it is like a butterfly effect. There's a ripple effect. Um, so if we were to look at his original 2004 to 2012 to 2015 timeline, keep it in the same range, right? We could also, I don't know, jump it over to 2008 to 2016 to 2019, 2020, or we can jump it 2016 2024 to 2027. I'm kind of feeling like we're in the latter, the 2016, because he said that it was a jump start regarding disputes over presidential, I don't know, election and what's happening in the government. I'm non bipartisan, just so you know. I'm one of those people, uh-uh, I'm not gonna sit there and be all divisive and going on one side or another. I ain't, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm, I'll admit, I'm a constitutionalist as far as I wanna retain anybody and everybody's rights, just inalienable rights across the board worldwide. That's just how I feel, that's how I am. So I'm, I'm not getting caught up in all that drama. It's just drama, it is drama. I'm not dealing with the drama. I just found it was really interesting. Um, the other thing that was kind of interesting is when he gave the information regarding his, um, what was it, his time machine. Well, it's now a 2006 patent, there's a patent on it, but it was dated in the United States government 2006, his exact same time machine. Um, but he was last heard of in 2000. So I don't know what to make of that. I really don't. Um, there's additional information out there, but I just wanted to share that because I thought it was kind of interesting. I was like, huh, it kind of piqued my interest a little bit. So that is what I'm sharing as brain tickler bag today. Um, I'm not gonna drag you out much longer. I really, I really do appreciate your patience if you listen to this entire thing. Um, I really hope that I, I'm adding some value, you know, to, to your life. And as time goes on, I definitely want to play with this and get more creative and share with more of what I've known and I experienced because I don't seem to be able to stop with all I have experienced and continue to experience and get information on and get downloads and I have writings going back to high school. I, they're, they're, and, and, I, and more just keeps coming. I can't keep up with it. So this is just a very, very short snippet of um, where this is kind of going with Voltaris. Maybe one of these days I'll, I'll, I'll share with you how I came about the name Voltaris. Um, so with that, again, Cleo, signing off. Big gratitude. Thank you for coming to visit me and support me. And if you would, I really appreciate, you know, like maybe 
a like click and a, sub, a, a subscribe to me because the more I can get that built up, the, the more I can really be supported to get out there. It's not about the money. It's just, it's motivation for me to know that, okay, people want to hear and Lola, sorry, my cat was on the table. I didn't want to remove that. Um, so yeah, if you like this, please hit like, it's just like a little feedback for me. It's like biofeedback. Um, and then also sub subscribe and that way you'll be on top of it. Plus I have the right now currently a Facebook, YouTube link together so you can click back and forth and I'll let people know when something new is about to pop up on Facebook as well. Um, and yeah, message me, email me if you would like to hear any specific topic. Um, I can go the plethora of psychology, metaphysics. I did used to own a metaphysical store up in the state of Washington. Um, yeah, you're, I'm, you're, you're gonna start seeing me crack open with a lot of things and it's a new one for me. I've never put myself out there before and so, I say thank you to, you know, a couple of major teachers in my life. So, yes, thank you. And, um, yeah. All right. So I'm going to sign off. I'm going to stop blabbering on. <laughs> okay. Thank you all again. I appreciate it. Have a beautiful, beautiful rest of the week. I will try and get one out um, again in a few more days, Wi-Fi permitting. All right. Thank you. Good night.